Thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some personal statement tips. So if you're working on a personal statement for medical school, dental school, any other health professional program, we're going to cover some ways to make your personal statement really stand out, some best practices, and just really get into depth on what you want to incorporate into your personal statement. So with that, one really big point that I kind of want to cover before we dive into that content is this point of this picture. So take a look at this picture. What do you see? For a lot of you, you might see an older lady. You'll see that if you look closer, her nose actually makes up the chin of a younger lady. So some of you see the older lady, some might see the younger lady. If you're having a hard time seeing that, you can actually look at videos online. It'll show you kind of the difference between these two. But it really just depends on your perspective. And the whole point of this is just that it's a very subjective. So depending on who you are, depending on your background, depending on the way that you see things is very much dependent on your background, perspective, et cetera. And that really kind of determines what you see in this picture. And subjectivity comes into play with personal statements in so many ways. I have read a personal statement where I thought the components were excellent, the story was told really well, and someone else read it and had some different comments and different suggestions for that student. So when you do write your personal statement, you will get a lot of feedback and a lot of different types of feedback. What we cover within this workshop and this video is really gonna focus on the main kind of rules, the, the hard and fast things you should and shouldn't do, and then some ideas to help you develop your content but your personal statement is gonna be very subjective. So have a lot of people read it so that you do get those opinions and so that you're able to kind of cater towards not just telling your personal story, but something that does reflect well with a lot of audiences and a lot of different people. Um, but keep in mind at the end of the day, this is your story, this is your personal statement. So go with the things that you feel like you really want to communicate to an admissions committee, as well as following some of the rules that we kind of go through today. But keep in mind that subjectivity is gonna come into play with a lot of pieces of your personal statement. So there are kind of two different types of personal statements. The general ones is typically what you'll see for something like medical school, where there's a very broad prompt or no prompt. This goes to play with all the centralized application systems too. For a lot of them, you'll have that personal statement that you submit. It's broad, it's not specific to any one program, it's just for the um, application as a whole for dental school, medical school, et cetera. Um, oftentimes with this, there's gonna be a character word limit. So you always wanna know that in advance and really cater to that as you're writing your personal statement. There's also the more focused prompts. This is where it's really specific and it has an exact question. There's a couple examples listed on here, but it could be discuss a time when you maybe displayed certain skills, or it could be talking about a specific accomplishment that you have, something like that. Um, typically, some of these might apply directly to each program. So you might get even more specific by saying, here is all of the experience I have, here's answering this prompt as it pertains to the specific program if you're applying not through a centralized application system. So keep in mind there are two different types and you really need to know that before going in and actually starting to write a personal statement because you're either gonna get a, need to get more specific or keep it broader depending on what you're um, applying to and what kind of prompt they're asking for. So what we're going to go through actually reflects five elements of good writing by Richard Walker. And there's actually a really good PDF that you can find online if you Google that, that covers some of these in more depth as well. But it's really just talking about how do I become a good writer? And we're going to talk about this specifically in the context of the personal statement. So we'll break down each one of these elements. And essentially what it is, is purpose is really just looking at why are you writing this? Your audience is saying, who are you addressing? So you really want to keep them in mind as you write each portion of your personal statement. Clarity is, are you being specific? Are you being concise? Are you showing the clear and kind of uh, perfect picture of what you're trying to communicate? Unity is really about the flow of your statement. And then coherence talks more about, is your statement clear? Um, is there a very nice picture there? And does everything flow together well? So some of these overlap in some ways. I would say a lot of them have some specific points within them, but we'll get into depth on each one. 
So purpose, let's begin there. So why is a personal statement a part of the admissions process? So essentially there's a couple points for it. One of them is that this is the opportunity for you to really showcase your written communication skills. And for a lot of programs, that is something that they wanna hear about. Um, it's really your chance to sell yourself. So keep that in mind, like you are selling who you are as an applicant. You are building off of the other pieces of your application and saying, here's who I am and here's why I am unique. So you're saying, here's what sets me apart. Here is why you should choose me over other applicants. So it's a really personal thing and that's why it's called the personal statement. It conveys here's where I've come from, here's where I want to go, um, here are reflections on different things that have occurred in my life and how that contributes to you as an admissions person and the perspective that you have of me. Um, so it's a really neat part of your statement. Keep it really personal, that word, I think people miss out on that a lot, um, but the purpose of this is to show that human side of your application. So keep that in mind as you're writing that personal statement. If you're not sure about your purpose, think about a couple of things. First off, just reflect on like some questions such as like when and why did you actually become interested in this field? Why do you want to be a PA? Why do you want to be an OT? Um, think about what you've learned about the field and how you've learned that and how that's contributed to the purpose that you now have. Um, and then think about your career goals because that plays into your purpose, why you're writing this personal statement, and that will help you to come up with some more specific things to incorporate to really showcase here is the purpose that I have. And we'll talk about how to kind of synthesize this into your statement really clearly and well in a little while. Um, if you're not sure if your purpose is clearly stated in your statement, ask someone who doesn't know you really well to read it and tell you what they think the purpose of it is and what your purpose is. So if you're unsure, if your purpose is clear, try to give it to someone else. Sometimes that outside perspective can help, especially if you say, hey, can you look at this and tell me what you feel like the purpose of this statement is and what you feel like the purpose of the person writing it is. So purpose is a big piece, but again, you need to know who you're writing this to. So you are writing this to an admissions person, right? So they are evaluating, should we accept you for medical school? Should we accept you for PT school? Whatever it is. And so admissions officers have a lot of things to say about personal statements that they read because they read so many. And these are just a couple of quotes that I thought were really good and reflected, I think, what the audience is really wanting to hear. Um, so this person is an associate dean of Cornell's Medical College. So I thought this was really interesting. And basically what he's saying here is that they're looking for something different. They hear a lot of the same things. I do too. I read a lot of personal statements um, and I hear a lot of the same things like I do like science. I do like to help people. And not that those aren't good points, but sometimes those are really vague points. And they're not very original when you use broad statements like that. Um, so I love the points that this person has, which is do it yourself, be careful, edit it, go back through as many drafts as you possibly need to and be yourself, really show your personality. I thought this was a great point to bring in of be who you are and show that person through your writing as much as you possibly can so that we can say this is a unique person that we want to admit. So that's one point that I thought this admission person did a great job of kind of describing here. Something else that another person said, also kind of a chairman on an admissions board, um, they talked about how they want applicants that are personalizing their statements. They want to hear things that are different. You'll notice that comes up in pretty much anything that I think you talk to an admissions person. They want to just hear something different. Um, and they're looking for you know, a specific type of medical student, a future physician. So they want to hear traits and things reflected in that statement that show them that this person's going to be a good fit for the field. Um, then this person ends with what have they done that shows they can relate to people and that they've already done that in an effective fashion. So that's one point to definitely bring up is talk about things that you've done in the past and then how that translates to the medical field or how that translates to uh, dental school, whatever it is that you're applying to, make it relatable, but use past experience to really paint that picture for an admissions person. 
So that's another thing that they're definitely looking for is that uniqueness. So when you're kind of checking, does this match my audience? Is what I'm writing, is my personal statement reflective of my audience? Think about some of these questions. Like what is unique about your life story? What makes you stand out? And think about the fact that, you know, you're already putting in a lot of other parts of this application. If you're doing it for medical school applications, there's so many other essays or other things that you're putting in there. So think about what makes you unique that you haven't already written about or that you can build off of some of the other portions of your application. Think about things that would just help them to know you better and help them to understand you better. It could be challenges you faced. It could be people in your life. It could be specific events. But what is going to help them to understand and give them more context to know who you are as a person and as it pertains to dental school, OG school, et cetera? And then what is the most compelling reasons that you can give to be considered for admission? What is the thing about you that is that convincing argument to say, I am an excellent applicant and I'm going to make it in medical school and I'm not just going to make it, but I'm going to be a great physician one day. So show that confidence, show here's why you should admit me. Um, and then reread your statement. But try to think about it from this perspective. Think about some of those quotes. Think about if you're an admissions person and you didn't have any context other than this piece of paper, is all this information relevant? Is there anything you're missing? Does this reflect an applicant that you feel like would be successful in that program and that would be someone that you'd want to be your physician or be your occupational therapist? So reread your statement if you've already written it. And if you haven't quite yet, think about the things um, from an admissions officer's perspective and try to incorporate those relevant things into your statement. Clarity is another big piece. So how do we make things clear? So this is where I do want to give you a couple of do's and don'ts as it pertains to this conversation. So a couple of do's, do answer the question being asked. Be really specific and intentional and use verbiage that says, I am clearly answering this question. If the prompt includes three separate things, like maybe it says, tell us about your educational, professional, and um, this other type of background, maybe personal background, make sure you clearly say, here is my educational background. Make sure maybe you put that word in there as you introduce stories about your educational background. Maybe you say, my educational background has been filled with XYZ experiences, and then you go into detail on those. But be really clear about that. If there is a specific prompt, you need to clearly address it. Um, tell a story. Give an example. Be specific. Now, let me give a quick disclaimer to this tell a story piece. I've read a lot of personal statements that are great and they tell good stories, but sometimes those stories are not relevant to the audience. So keep in mind that if you tell a story, tell an intentional story. Don't just tell me a story about how you had to face this challenge and it was really difficult. Make that relate to me as an admissions person for medical school. Why was this challenge important to developing who you are? Why did this challenge make you someone who's a good fit for medical school or for being a physician? Give examples, be specific. Those two are hand in hand. You can always give broad statements. You can say things like, I am very interested in helping people, or I'm a great communicator. Those are super broad statements, which means they apply to a lot of different applicants. So you could say that, and so could 500 other people in their application. So instead of doing that, what I would encourage you to think about is how can I give an example of myself as a good communicator? It could be a two or three sentence example of, there was a time where in my part-time job at XYZ organization, I learned about good communication by doing these specific things. So give that example rather than just communicating a broad statement that doesn't really give them anything unique and different, and it doesn't stand out as much in their minds. So give those specific examples. Choose strong nouns and verbs. So I would definitely encourage you use some really strong nouns and verbs because this can really help to make your statement stand out. It can help to clean, paint a clearer picture for the admissions person. If you're having a hard time with this, we have a really good list of verbs in our career guide on our website, which is just career.uga.edu. 
Um, there's a whole list in there. It's actually for resumes, but I find that students will use it a lot of times and it's very helpful for other pieces of writing like a personal statement. So think about what are ways I can use the stronger nouns, the stronger verbs to paint a clearer picture. And then also give appropriate, meaningful context. You do not have to give context for every single thing that you write about, and it does not need to take a paragraph to do that. What this means is maybe you give one simple sentence to introduce the student organization that you're about to talk about that had such a big impact on here. So that could be, I was a part of the executive board for UGA Miracle in this semester, and I learned these things from it. And then you go from there and give a more specific example. But that's one simple sentence of context. We know where you're headed. We know what you're doing. We know that you're a part of this organization, and you're about to tell us more about that. Don't feel like you need to give three sentences of context. I read that a lot where people give kind of introductory words or give too much context that's not really necessary. Just give enough that the reader knows where they're headed next. A couple of things to not do. Don't speak in cliches or generalities. We already kind of covered the general piece. Don't give those broad statements, give the specific ones, but please avoid cliches. I've read so many statements that have cliches and it's just not impactful. It's much better to replace the cliche with the point that you're trying to communicate, but in a more personal story or in a more personal example. So how can you communicate what that cliche you feel like that says about you, but how can you incorporate something that is much more personal and meaningful to you? So skip the cliche, replace it with something that's more personal um, to you in your life, and that's gonna speak more to who you are. Don't overwrite, don't fill with fluff. Um, that goes right into the using warm up words and phrases. Just try to cut as much as possible. Really try to stay focused on what is the core meaning of this sentence, paragraph, or the entire personal statement, and anything that doesn't match with that needs to be cut out. I mean, really boil it down to what am I trying to say here? How can I say that as quickly as possible? Because you don't have that much space to fill it with fluff. So if you like to give description, if you like to use a lot of adjectives, that's okay if it's helping paint a clear picture for us, but you only have so many words to do that. So don't use three adjectives, pick one meaningful one and go from there and try to be concise as you possibly can. And then avoid repeating other parts of your application. This is really tricky, especially for medical or dental school, because you are writing so much about like work and activities. One of the best things you can do is if you've already written your work and activity section, take that, look at it and say, okay, what do I wanna talk about? What is something that's very personal, speaks to my story, speaks to me being a good applicant that is not in this work and activity section already? Now, there might be some things that you build off of the work and activity section. So I've had students that had one work or one activity thing they were putting in there, and they were like, I'm not going to tell the same story, but it is this experience that is a really big part of my personal statement. That's fine, but don't let that verbiage, don't let the writing be the same between your work and activity section and your personal statement. It should reflect two different things. Um, so make sure that if you are using something from work and activities, it doesn't feel like we're rereading something. It feels like we heard one quick sentence of context in the personal statement and way more depth to how this affected your personal life and your experience and you being a great physician one day down the road. So just avoid that repetition. If you're not sure, I would encourage you to meet with your career consultant and have them look it over to help you evaluate if you are repeating those two um, writing, uh, those two documents, the personal statement and the essays. So unity is the other piece. So with this, to keep unity, especially with the broad statements, you need to know what you're covering. You need to understand what do I need to incorporate in my personal statement. So I love these three concepts. The University of Minnesota actually has a great uh, video and kind of interactive pieces on their website. And it's called Personal Statements for a Health Profession Program. I would actually encourage you to take a look at it. It goes into more depth on some of these pieces as well. But that's where these concepts come from. So fit, capacity, 
vision and motivation are the three. We'll start with motivation. This is one that I think you'll easily understand this needs to be in your statement and it needs to be clear. Why do you wanna pursue this career? That's really what this is asking. Why are you interested in this? Why are you motivated to actually go down this road? This usually incorporates both your initial aspiration, so that might be when was that aha moment or what was the series of events that led you to realize this is what I wanna do and this is what I'm passionate about. From there, you want to make sure you say, here is how I confirmed this motivation. Oftentimes, that initial aspiration happens at a young age. So don't spend all of your time on that because, honestly, you're not showing that, hey, I have a really mature understanding and I understand how this field works. I have prepared. I've done shadowing. And I really know kind of all the different avenues that I could go in this field. Um, and I've kind of developed a more mature understanding and motivation for that. So don't spend all your time on the initial piece. Make sure you go into the ongoing preparation. Motivation is a huge piece. Don't forget to include that concept in your personal statement. Fit, capacity, how do you know this is the right fit for you? Oftentimes this looks at your values and qualities and characteristics that you bring to the table. Be honest in the way that you assess these and then talk about how they match the profession. I have a lot of students who do a great job with this by giving an example of a personal characteristic or quality and then they talk about shadowing and how they saw a doctor or a PT or a PA actually use that characteristic or quality in their work. And that shows a great match and a great fit for the profession. The second piece to this is more about capacity. So how do we know that you have what it takes to be successful as a nurse, as a doctor, et cetera? Um, and so basically, this is just looking at your strengths, weaknesses, challenges. It puts them in this context that tells me you will be able to succeed in this field. So it's almost building off of the fit piece and saying, not only am I a good fit, but I also will be successful in this. And again, examples help to really showcase that. Vision, so how do you want to impact the profession? This is the moving forward, this is the goals. Um, what are things that you want to do to make a difference? This can be broad. I've had students that just say, overall, in the profession, I wanna do this. I've also had some who are more specific. They have a specialization they're interested in. They have something more tangible. They have a city they wanna work in, something like that. If they are really specific, be really cautious about pigeonholing yourself into a certain area, especially for medical school. Um, oftentimes they know as an admissions person, you're probably gonna end up changing specializations. Like if you have an interest now, oftentimes it's gonna change as you get more experience with different specializations as you go through your medical school program. So be careful about being too specific. Oftentimes it's good to start and end with the broader statements of the profession itself. So being a physician as a whole and what you love about that and the goals you have within that. And then in the little bit of a piece of it, you can mention, here's a more specific goal that I have because of this interest, but do not spend all of your time talking about how I only want to be a pediatric doctor for these reasons. Incorporate that as something that you've enjoyed so far and are interested in pursuing, but focus more on the profession as a whole to avoid pigeonholing yourself into one area. Take a second on this slide, really go back and reflect. Take a screenshot of it, um, spend some time here, reflect on each of these areas and make sure that they're clearly being addressed within your statement, especially if you have a broad prompt and there's not that much specific kind of guiding you. Even if you do have a more specific prompt, oftentimes I find that a lot of these kind of answer the question really well and do in some way, shape or form need to be incorporated into your statement. But at the end of the day, for specific prompts, make sure you clearly address the prompt that you're given. Coherence is the very last piece of the puzzle, and this has a lot to do with good writing. So it's putting it all together, it's organizing your statement logically. This sounds so basic, but go back to high school, think about your introduction, your body paragraphs, your conclusion, because oftentimes that's how the personal statement ends up being organized, because it makes sense, it's clear, it's easy for the reader to follow. Themes can be a great way to tie pieces together. So it doesn't feel like we have these random stories that absolutely don't correlate. 
So think about what is the theme that can help to bridge the gap. And usually that theme will be brought up in each paragraph in some way, shape, or form. Themes do not need to be outrageous and crazy and out there. They can be simple. It can be persistence. It could be communication. I've had students, especially in OT and PT, communication and the fact that they're a good communicator and how that plays into the field is brought up in each and every paragraph. And it really forms this nice cohesive statement that's easy to follow along with because that's the main guiding point. Start strong. Sometimes an intentional story can be a good way to start strong. Don't just start with that cliche. That's really going to be a way to not engage the reader and make sure the story is actually intentional. Don't just start with a random story that doesn't have a place in your statement. But oftentimes that intentional story can be a good way to start off strong. When you're tying it all together, make sure that you do have a topic sentence for every single paragraph. Um, basically, all the other sentences should relate and support that point. So do not have sentences within a paragraph that aren't relating to what you feel like is the main point or the main concept of that paragraph or the topic sentence. So again, really basic stuff. Go back to what you learned in high school because I bet a lot of that relates really well. Then another thing that's really nice to do, sometimes repeating keywords and phrases can help to really strongly communicate your theme. Um, it can help to get a specific point across really well. Now, don't use the exact same word 17 times. That's going to get really dull and boring. You can sometimes use maybe offsets of the word or something a little bit different um, and then go back to some of the keywords that you mentioned in the introductory paragraph in your conclusion, and that can help to tie things together very nicely. Um, again, use those impactful nouns and verbs, and then use transitionary words and sentences so that you're helping to tie everything together. Don't just end a paragraph and leave it hanging. Make sure we feel like it's connected to the next thought rather than having just several separate thoughts that don't actually connect together. So what is your next step? What do you want to do moving forward from here to either continuing to develop, um, start your first draft, or finish out your personal statement? Um, think of something, jot something down. If you're not sure, I would encourage you to think about revising, 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 because this is such a subjective thing, and this is something you're going to get a lot of opinions on, having people look at it getting some revisions are really helpful. These are a few of the resources that exist. Definitely use your career consultant because they're so helpful. But also think about someone who knows you well and someone who doesn't know you well. The person who knows you well can say, does this sound like you? Does this speak to who you are? Does this really show the person that I know that you are and that is going to be a great OT? Um, versus the person who doesn't know you well can say, I don't know if I have enough context. I have no clue what you're talking about here. Um, or maybe this really gives me some good content and I feel like I know you better, even though I don't know you at all. And that person who doesn't know you well could be your career consultant or it could be a faculty member, but have people read over your statement. That's so helpful and it's gonna make your statement that much stronger. So again, use the Career Center. We are here for you. Career.uga.edu is where you can go to book appointments, see some information about personal statements, resumes, et cetera. Um, but I hope this video gave you some tips to kind of get you started or maybe even wrap up your personal statement. And please reach out to the Career Center um, with any questions that you have on this topic.